fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty, hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. discovered in the western United States, thousands of miners and prospectors, farmers, criminals, and clerks poured into the new territory. Greed and violence ruled the mining camps, and it was there that the masked rider of the plains did some of his greatest work in the cause of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for the hill country! Santa's waiting for us! And on Silver Homer! High in the hills, the Lone Ranger and Tonto stopped to purchase supplies from old Silas Fawcett. Silas, a prospector for years, had finally struck it rich. But he worked his claim alone and seemed to resent the masked man's intrusion. Uh, there's your bacon... There's your beans. There's the flour you asked for. Is that enough? Or are you going to keep on pestering me? How much do we owe you, Silas? Nothing. Take it and get. Well, we can't accept gifts. We'll pay for what we receive. I want your cash. Perhaps my mask has misled you. We're not outlaws. This isn't stolen money. Don't tell me who you are. Injun, your, your name's Tonto, ain't it? Uh. You're the Lone Ranger. Now, how did you recognize us? I ain't no fool. Maybe you think I am, but I ain't. Has anything gone wrong? Huh? What made you ask a loco question like that? You seem to be out of temper. I thought maybe something had happened to irritate you. Look here, Mr. Lone Ranger. Yes? I'm always out of temper. It's a matter of principle with me. I wasn't knee-high to a grasshopper before I found out that it's only idiots and feeble-minded folks that are good-natured. Well, I ain't no idiot. I ain't feeble-minded. I'm doggone mad nearly every day of my life. <laughs> and mornings I wake up feeling pleasant, I... I just think back and all the bad times I've had to uh, get mad again. That's a strange way to feel. Yeah? Why is it? You're well off. Your wants are few and easy to provide for. You're healthy. I doubt that you've done anything to make your conscience bother you to any extent. I should think you'd be as happy as it's possible for most men to be. Oh. You don't agree? I don't. But I ain't gonna argue. How long are you two gonna keep me from getting at my work? We're leaving now. Take the flower, Tonto. I'll pack the rest. Uh, me take it. <laughs> Silas. Well? I suggest you be more careful how you talk in the future. Eh? Someday you're going to tell all that to someone who believes you. Isn't he funny, fella? <laughs> He's one of those people who are so big-hearted. They don't dare let others know how generous they really are. <laughs> Not right. Living alone for so many years makes him seem more gruff than he really is. One of these days, Tonto, we'll make it a point to look up Silas again. Several months passed, and then late one afternoon, a boy of 13 reined in his horse at the rear of a small cottage, about a mile from the town of Hilldale. He was hot and dusty, but filled with excitement he could scarcely contain. 
He dismounted, led his horse to a lean-to stable, looked diggerly around him, then called... Dixie! Hi, Dixie, where are you? Here I am. Oh, there you are. Come here, quick. I was coming. Well, hurry. I was coming. Faster. I was coming. I was coming as fast as I can. I'm here. Now, where for all the rush, Jimmy? Where's Ma? She ain't by the back window, is she? Your Ma's in the parlor. Say, where you all been all day? Your Ma was asking for you a dozen times. Dixie, can you keep a secret? Secret? <laughs> Why, it's the closest mouth colored gentleman in the whole county. No, I mean it, Dixie. If you won't promise to tell nobody, anybody at all, even Ma, well, you can't know about it. I won't say a word. Cross my heart, I won't. Well, I've been up in the hills. Huh? See? You all took that uh, pickaxe with you again. Jimmy, was you prospecting? Uh-huh. You all went clean to the hills? Oh, it weren't much of a trip for a horseman like me. Yeah, but why, before you get so excited, just tell me that. Lossie, if you all said you hadn't been in them hills after being gone all day, that'd be something. But wait till I show you. What's that in your pocket? I'll show you. Wait. Here. Now just take a look at that. Man. Dixie, I found it. I found gold. You sure enough did. Here, here, let, let me handle that. Mm, mm, my, ain't it pretty, though? All gleaming and sparkling like candles. Laws and mercy. And there's heaps more where that came from. You don't say. Think of it, Dixie. Gosh, it'll mean new things for Ma. Pretty dresses. All kinds of swell grub for her to eat. Why, golly, I'll bet there's enough there to fix it so she'll never have to work out again. My, oh, my. Jimmy, I don't know as I ever did see gold before. Not real sparkling gold like this. Now, remember, you promised you wouldn't tell. Ain't you even going to tell your ma? We've got to keep it a secret, Dixie. Why for? Well, I ain't old enough to file on the claim. I wouldn't trust nobody but you to file on it for me. And as far as ma's concerned, what I want to do is wait till we've got all the gold that's there, then tell her for a surprise. We? Sure. We'll sneak away every chance we'll get. Yeah. We'll sack the ore and pack it back and then hide it someplace. Yeah. Well, maybe up in the loft of the barn. Yes, sir. Well, the claim's all worked out. Well, then we'll take a sample to town to be a sade. Mm -hmm. And after that, we'll come back and tell Ma how rich she is. Well, of course, Dixie, you'll get your share, too. Jimmy, I was practically speechless. I sure am. Well, unsaddle for me and rub Blackie down, will you? I'm going inside. You all go right ahead. Come on, Blackie. Go, old <laughs> Oh, them golden slippers. Oh, them golden slippers. Oh, them Ma! Was that you, son? Gosh, Ma, you look tired. Oh, I can know more another day, son. Where'd you work today? Oh, I helped Miss Wilkins out most of forenoon, and there was a big wash over the Clements place. Ah, oh, they do live fine, them folks. And gee, I hate to see you come home looking so all done in. Oh, folks have got to work to live, Jimmy. Well, you won't have to for long. Well, what nonsense is that? It ain't nonsense. I can't tell you now because it's a secret. But, Ma, just you wait. It ain't going to be long till you can tell all them folks you don't need to work for them anymore. Oh, Jimmy, you're the limit. <laughs> all right, laugh at me. But just you wait and see. Nearly three weeks later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto, who were camped in the foothills, heard the sound of picks digging into rock. What's that, Tonto? Someone dig rock? That's what it sounds like. Certainly can't be gold hunters, though. There's no gold around here. Mm, maybe we look, huh? We must be just beyond that outcropping. Come on. Uh. Dixie. 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 One of them is just a boy from the sound of his voice, Tony. Uh, don't alarm them. They'll see what they're up to. Well, there, Dixie. That's enough for today. There ain't such an awful lot of this here gold left, Jimmy. Nope. A couple more chips and I reckon we'll have it all. Want to sack up what we dug out? Better not. We'll have to be getting back to beat my home. It'll be safe enough. I reckon. Gee, I wonder how much this is going to bring. <laughs> I couldn't even make a guess. Would uh, would it be a million, you think? <laughs> Don't be crazy. A million's a lot of cash. Uh, uh, a thousand? Mm, a thousand's a lot more, too. Oh, but maybe there just might be. I was going to buy me a gold watch with what I take for my share. Just the biggest gold watch I can find. What I get's going for my. <laughs> She'll be a mighty pleased woman. Only trouble is, I can't make up my mind exactly what to get her. 
Do you think she'd like to spend it on dresses or for fixing up the house or for taking a trip somewhere or what? Maybe your ma will have her own notions about that. Uh -huh. Likely she will. Only there's one thing sure. She ain't going to do one more lick of work for the folks around town. I won't have it. Your ma's getting to the age where she can't work much longer, Jimmy. Mm, that's what I mean. Well, let's get going. Come on. I's a coming, yes, sir. We'll just about get home in time. <coughs> get up there. Get, get up on there. Get on, on you, Carlos. Get up there. If there's gold here, Tato, it's the first I've heard of it. Prospectors all claim you have to go further into the hills. Mm. You look. Fool's gold. Iron pyrites. Ah. Poor youngster. Afraid he's in for a bad disappointment. I like the boy from the little I heard. Uh, him sound like good boy. I wonder... What you think? Tonto, I've got an idea. Let's get back to the horses. Uh. We'll do a little investigating. Perhaps we can take a hand in this. At the end of two more days, Jimmy and Dixie were satisfied that they had exhausted the possibilities of the vein Jimmy had located. It was in the evening. Jimmy and his mother had finished their supper and were stacking the dishes before washing them went. Jimmy. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry, Ma. What even the world's got into you? Well, you're so fidgety and nervous, I never saw the like. You been up to something? Ma, I got to tell you. <laughs> You done something? Oh, no, Ma. It's my secret I've been telling you about. Oh, there. Oh, please, Ma, let the dishes go till I show you. Come on, please. Oh, land sakes, I don't suppose I'll have any peace till I do. Now, where'd I have to go to see this big secret? Just out to the barn. Well, go Come on, on Ma, on. hurry up. Dixie! Yes, sir? Did you bring some down from the loft to show Ma? <laughs> I sure did. There it is, right there in that sack. Whatever you two talking about. You all do for a big surprise, ma'am. Just put your hand in that sack, Ma. Take a look at what you find there. Why, what is it? Gee, can't you tell? Well, it's getting dark. Well, that's gold, Ma. Gold. Jimmy, no. <laughs> Indeed it is, ma'am. <laughs> that's just part of it, Ma. We got all kinds of sacks full of it. We got them hid up in the loft. Well, I never... Now tell me I didn't have a real secret. Oh, mercy sakes, I... I don't know what to say. You ain't gonna work no more. You're gonna take it easy and rest and have things you want like you always should have had. Oh, you're a good boy, Jimmy. First thing in the morning, I'm taking a sample into the assay office. Oh, I bet this will test out just as rich as any they ever seen. <laughs> Me, oh my. I can just hear them dollars clinking in my pockets now. Bless you, Jimmy. I, I wish your pa would live to see you. He'd have been mighty proud. Hello, Silver! Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout. Come on. It'll be almost morning before we reach Silas's place, Tato. Uh -huh. I wonder if he'll pretend to be as bad natured as the last time. Uh, maybe. Hurry, Silver, old fellow. All through the night, the masked man and the Indian raced along the winding trail that climbed higher and higher into the hills. Then, just at dawn... He's up already. There's smoke coming from the chimney. Ah. Who's there? Friends. I ain't got no friends. Don't expect to have no friends. Don't want no friends. Oh, Oh, it's you fellas again, is it? Mind if we step inside? Uh, plain enough, you don't care what I think, or you wouldn't even be here bothering me. You know better than... Well, well, come in, come in. Don't stand there like dummies. Uh, 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 thanks. Uh, well, <laughs> what are you laughing at, Injun? <laughs> me laugh at you. <laughs> huh, at me? Of all the nerve. Just goes to show what crush you got. Uh, well, all right. What do you fellas want? I have something to tell you, Silas. Uh, that's what most folks think. And I want you to listen to me. Yeah, and they always expect me to listen, too. Uh, well, spill it. I will. When I've finished, you can make your own decision. I won't urge you either way. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger told the old prospector all about Jim and his mother. I investigated them thoroughly, Silas. The mother is a widow who was left with a home but no money. She had the boy to raise, and she supported him and herself by what housework she could get. <laughs> and what I had in mind was the boy's disappointment and his mother's. Obviously, neither one of them knows the first thing about gold. The mother can't help but realize how much extra money would ease her burden. And the boy's so proud to think that he's done something to make his mother happier that he's going to be heartbroken when he finds out the truth. Uh, you and the redskin are pesky nuisance. All my born days, I've never seen such nuisances as you are. <laughs> hey, redskin, you quit laughing at me. Take good manners. <laughs> then you refuse? There you go, putting words into my mouth I never said. What will you do? Uh, just like you asked me. Good. But mind you, don't go getting notions. It ain't because I'm big-hearted or anything simple like that. No? I'm handing over that door for just one reason. And that? So when I feel myself slipping into good nature, I can think back to today and remember what a soft-headed idiot I was. And if that don't get my dander up, nothing will. That same morning, young Jimmy and Dixie headed for town. In a cardboard box wrapped in brown paper, the boy carried his precious burden, a sample of the ore. At last, the government office was reached, but just as they were about to enter, Dixie touched Jimmy's arm. And... What is it, Dixie? You, you, you all better go in there alone, Jimmy. Uh-huh? I just can't stand the excitement. My heart won't hold up on this. <laughs> all right. Wait for me here. Oh, them golden slippers. Oh. Well, doggone if it ain't young Jimmy. It's a Withers boy. Yeah, what do you got in that there box, Jimmy? Ellis, I'll bet the kid's been prospecting. <laughs> Is Mr. Quillen here? Want me, Jimmy? Uh-huh. I got something I want to report on. Um, I'll bet the kid struck it rich. Huh? Well, let us in on it, will you, kid? Huh? Say... Maybe he'd be willing to teach us something about prospecting, huh? <laughs> I'll leave Jimmy be. I'm getting tired of you loafers hanging around here anyhow. Hey, let me have that box you got there, Jimmy. Sure. You yeah, got it wrapped up real well, eh? <laughs> it's mighty valuable war, Mr. Quillen. Well, you can leave it here with me, and I'll have a report for you pretty soon. Well, I kind of thought you could give me an idea right away. Well, I could... Jimmy... Did you bring this here just for a joke? A joke? What do you mean, Mr. Quillen? You mean you really thought this was gold ore? Why, ain't it? Why, Jimmy, this ain't nothing but fool's gold. Can't you tell the difference yet? <laughs> fool's gold. Look what the young and thought was pay dirt. That's a good name. Hi, fellas. Look what the kid brought in for the say. Hi, righty. I thought it was... Oh, I'm sorry, Jimmy. Well, that's all right. I guess you think I'm an awful greenhorn. You ain't the first one to make the same mistake. Some of these wise acres here done the same thing in their time. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Well, thank you. Bye. <laughs> what did the man say, Jimmy? Uh, it's fool's gold, Dixie. Fool's gold. Only I'm the fool. And after all me and Maud planned to do with the cash we was going to have, I don't know what to tell her. No, no, Jimmy. Lord, it ain't so bad. Well, what did folks like us do with gold if we was to have it anyhow? I, I never really wanted to have a cash. I, I mean, uh, not special. Dixie, I can't go back to tell Ma about this. I just can't. Now, don't you take on so. Your Ma thinks just as much of gold or no gold. Now, you all come home with me. Jimmy and Dixie rode slowly home. A disappointment made them silent. But suddenly, as they drew near the house, Jimmy shouted, Dixie, look at it. What? Well, there's two fellas with a wagon. They've been loading it with sacks from our barn. Dixie, they're stealing our gold. Sure, they're welcome to it, ain't they? It ain't nothing but fool's gold, you said. Well, I don't care what it is. They ain't gonna steal it. Get up, get up, Blackie. Well, it's peaceful. I ain't going to meddle with no masked man. Come on, Dixie. Hi there, leave that alone. You get away from that. Get up, get up there. Get going, Silver. Set him up, set him up. You come back with that. Hold on. Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver, hold on. Oh, oh, Blackie, oh. 
no use in us trying to catch them fellas, Blackie. You crooks, you thieves! I'll get even. Dixie, you were scared. You never even tried to help me. Oh, whoa, oh, oh. <laughs> I wasn't scared, Jimmy. Indeed wasn't. I was just cautious, that's all. You were scared and you needn't say you wasn't. Well, why for should we fight over that uh, fool's gold, huh? And they didn't think it was fool's gold. They likely just didn't know no better, that's all. Well, I'll bet they did. They wouldn't have gone to all the trouble to bring a wagon if they didn't. But, uh, but Jimmy, I... Dixie! I'll bet anything I know just what happened. Huh? I'll bet when I picked out samples to take to the assay office, I just got fool's gold mixed up by mistake. What do you all mean? It wouldn't surprise me none at all if the rest of that ore was real gold. Golly, them crooks sticked away with it. I'm going back to the sheriff. Get up, Blackie. Get up. There. <laughs> What can I do for you? Sheriff Crooks just stole gold from me. Yeah. What's that? There was two of them. One was a masked man and one was a redskin. They had a wagon. Whoa, and... whoa, up there. Now stand still and get your breath and try to make it a mite easier. <laughs> but you got to do something quick, Sheriff. Every second you're sitting there, they're getting farther away and harder to catch. Well, in the first place, where would you get gold for them to steal, Jimmy? Uh, sure, Sheriff. Hey, ain't you heard? <laughs> uh, Jimmy was in the say office a while ago to have a sample of fool's gold valued. <laughs> The gold he claims he stole is just that worth of stuff he brought to town with him. All right, if that's so, then why did they steal it? Of course I'm just a kid. I could be fooled easy on something like that. But that don't explain how two grown men could fool ourselves. <laughs> oh, Jimmy, you just got the gold fever, that's all. You better head for home and cool off a bit. Well, hold on. <laughs> Say, you ain't taking this serious, are you? Well, the kid has got something there. I've yet to meet the engine around these parts that uh, couldn't tell real gold from the other kind. Jimmy, uh, how much did they get off with? A whole wagon load, Sheriff. Honest. What I think is that stuff I brought to the assay office I just grabbed accidental. Well, I bet all the rest of it was high-grade ore. Hey, well, what's that? I hear something said about high-grade ore? Howdy, sir. Uh, the young in here was just telling us he had a wagon load of ore stolen from him. Well, then, uh, what are you sitting there polishing the city of Bridges for? Why don't you get after it? There's some more things I'd like to know about first. Jimmy, you said it was a masked man and a redskin stole that gold. Uh-huh, I seen him plain. You real sure? I sure am. You know them crooks? Well, I did hear something about a pair answering that description being seen in the neighborhood, but uh, my understanding was that they was just as far from being crooks as two fellas could be. Oh, oh masked men are outlaws, ain't they? I don't know. Please, Sheriff, please. You gotta do something. Don't you know your duty, Sheriff? Even if it was fool's gold, they stole it, didn't they? And stealing is stealing. No matter what it was they took. Oh, gosh, I ain't been this mad in a real long time. Makes me feel just dandy. Well, I'll look into it. Come along, deputy. Yeah. I'm going, too. All right. We'll pick up Quillen on the way. Oh, I'm going if I don't tag along. Maybe I'll be able to give you a hand at trailing the skunk. <laughs> In the meantime, with Tonto at the range and the Lone Ranger riding alongside, the wagon had been driven to an isolated spot where a great pile of gravel had been dumped. The masked man and the Indian worked hard. Then, finally... I think that does it, Tonto. Mm -hmm. Already now. Well, Jimmy's going to think pretty hard of his kemosabe, but I've rather enjoyed what we've done. Him come soon now. If Silas plays his part. Huh. Well, keep watch, Tonto. There's nothing more to do now except wait. An hour later, a group of riders, Jimmy, Silas, the government clerk, the sheriff, and his deputy, followed the broad trail left by the wagon. It led to a woods just where the hills began, and... Sheriff! Here, yeah, Jimmy! In that woods there! Don't you see something? Well, I don't know. Hey, golly, that's the end of the trail, Sheriff. There's a wagon in there. Hurry before they get away again. Come on, men. Get up there. 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 Come on. Hey, they're seated. Well, they're darn the they ain't firing at us. Ride them down. They ain't gonna stay to fight. Well, they're making a run for it. Come on, keep after them, won't you, Sheriff? See the way they're traveling? Uh -huh. They'll just try and catch them on, please. Well, that's the wagon, all right. Yeah, there's ore in it, too. Pull up! Whoa! Whoa. 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 It's here. It's all here. <laughs> Doggone if it don't look like real gold ore, too. Well, look at it, Mr. Quillen. This, this ain't fool's gold, too, is it? Yeah, give me a few chunks of that, will you? In just a second. Here you are. Mm. Well, well, tell the young'un. Don't keep him waiting. 
Is it worth anything or ain't it? Jimmy? Yeah? I don't know how come you brought me the samples you did, but I'm here to say this hoe in the wagon is worth a plenty. I ain't seen any to compare with it from around here except for what Silas found. Is there more where this came from? That was all of it, Mr. Cullen. Oh, golly, wait till I tell Ma about this. That Dixie, he'll just about have a fit. Well, I'd say you'll get enough gold from that load right there to net you a real sizable sum. Oh, gee. Uh, say, young'un. Huh? I've done a sight of prospecting in my day. If you're dead sot on looking for more gold, why, maybe your Ma'd let you come up to my place where I could give you a few pointers. Oh, golly, would you? Would you really? Well, uh, that is, if you didn't insist on me acting sociable to, to get my principles. It is. Now, don't you be pestering me, Sheriff. Just step over here for a second, will you? Uh, what do you want? Just a few words with you, Zool. Well, better be mighty few. Yeah, we can't be heard from here, eh? Well? Say, this, is there anything you'd like to tell me about this deal? Tell you? Uh, what could I? Oh, I thought maybe you could explain a few points. Huh? <laughs> For instance, uh, how every time we lost the trail on hard ground, you was able to pick it right up again. Of course, I'm a, I'm a better trailer than you, that's why. And uh, how come that happens to be your wagon with your horses hitched to it? Huh? Say, now don't that beat all. I, I never even noticed it till you pointed it out. Why, them <laughs> crooks. <laughs> and maybe you can explain why this ore looks uncommonly like what I've seen took from your place. For, uh, anything else you want to ask me that ain't none of your business? Uh, just one thing. Well, you fellas was looking over the wagon, I, I moved it over where them trees are real thick. A funny thing, but uh, I seen where somebody going and dumped a whole lot of fools go there. And recent, too. Why, I, I, I don't know a thing about it. You're exceeding your duty bullying me like this. <laughs> Silas, you're an awful old crab. You bet I am. On top. But underneath, you got a heart as soft as mush. Hey, them's fighting words. <laughs> well, Silas, you can rant and sputter all you want. But I got a hunch that you and the mass man done something today that, that I'd have been mighty proud to have thought of doing myself. I'll sell my The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.